Welcome back to Construction Grammar. Today we've got a very short video on the lexicon syntax continuum. Let's start with a quick revision of what we've covered so far. As we've already seen, construction grammar is a cognitive theory of language. It claims that the central unit of language are constructions, pairings of form and meaning. And in the last video, we looked more closely at notational variants of how we can represent constructions. What we also saw in that video was that pattern detection and generalization allow us to schematize, and that's something that we're very quickly going to revise today. On top of that, I will also show you how all of the constructions work together and lie on a lexicon syntax continuum. Back to our familiar example. So we said that unfriendly, unacceptable and unfaithful, due to domain general human properties such as pattern detection and generalization, allow us to get to a schema, unadjective meaning not adjective. In the last video, we saw that there are many different ways of representing constructions. Let's stick with a simplified form in light blue. So the form is unadjective, the meaning is not adjective. In the very first video, we've also seen that that is but one type of construction. So we know that words, like apple, are constructions. And now we've seen again that morphemes can be seen as constructions. At the same time, idioms like spill the beans have got a form and a very specific meaning associated with it and even very abstract schematic patterns, like the resultative construction. He wiped the table clean. They elected Biden president. She smiled herself an upgrade, where the subject causes the object to become a certain state by a certain verbal action. Now, one of the main tenets of construction grammar is that it's constructions all the way so that there is a lexicon syntax client. All levels of description, from morphemes, via words, idioms, partially filled and fully abstract phrasal patterns like the resultative construction, all involve four meaning pairings. And because of this, construction grammarians have renamed the lexicon the constructicon. Let's have a closer look at the constructicon. And just for the sake of illustration, let's see what are the constructions that lie on this lexicon syntax continuum. Well, on the one hand, we've got atomic substantive constructions. That means atomic, they've only got one element on the form level, here bean, and it's substantive. It doesn't have any slots. So the phonology is fully filled. Now, bean, as in this example, which has the sounds b, E -n, linked to the meaning of beans, the concept of bean, is a word. So classically, we would find these in the lexicon. But in construction grammar, we just call them atomic and substantive constructions. We also have atomic schematic constructions, something like a noun or a verb, so syntactic categories as they will be called in other approaches. Note and look at the double arrow in the right-hand column that, again, we don't just give the form of these. The syntactic form noun on the meaning level is linked to the concept of a thing, whereas for the syntactic category of verb, the meaning that is linked to that is that of an event. We're talking about prototypical categories here. As you may remember from your school grammar, very often people say, well, nouns are not all things and verbs are not all events. Let me illustrate this with an example. If you've got the verb to arrive and you've got the noun arrival, then if you think about them with respect to the event in the real world, we could agree that it's the same thing. It's an action. Someone arrives somewhere. But it does make a huge difference whether I say she arrived in Rome, where I talk about the event in time and sort of mentally I almost picture her going there getting off the plane maybe, stepping outside of the airport and then uh, getting into town and arriving in the city. Whereas her arrival in Rome sort of backgrounds all of the event structure and just treats her arrival as one thing. So while in the real world arrival and arrive seem to be talking about the same thing, mentally when we choose the noun or the verb we conceptualise them differently. If we treat them as a verb, we treat them as an event that is ongoing in time, 
if we encode it in a noun, we just treat it as one thing. And we're not too interested about the details of this. So maybe you use it to say something like, her arrival was celebrated. Okay? So you don't go into the nitty details of unpacking mentally sort of all the steps that in, you know, involve her arriving there, but you just treat her arrival as one thing. So on this very abstract level, we can say that the form noun as a schematic category is linked to the meaning of thing. And at the same time, the category verb is linked to the meaning event. Then we've got complex constructions. Complex constructions are constructions where we can identify parts. So in the noun plural construction, cats, dogs, horses, we can see that there's a noun, cat, dog, and horse, that we find elsewhere in the constructicon, and that has an edit part to it that signals the plural. So here we see that the noun on the form level obviously corresponds to a thing slot on the meaning level, and the s at the end is a plural marker. Also, our well-known example of the unadjective construction, not adjective, untrue, unfriendly, unhappy, also is complex because we've got two parts, the initial un and then a slot, and the slot makes it schematic. So that would be examples of how morphology is treated by constructions. Next, we get complex constructions. So again, constructions where we can identify individual parts, but which are largely substantive, which only have a couple of slots, so-called idioms. So X spills the beans, again, something that we've seen. It means divulge information. So whoever we put into the subject slot is going to be the person that tells the secret that divulges the information. And as you will remember, the beans only means information in this specific idiom, and that's why the beans has got the subscript 3 that links it to its special meaning information 3 um, on the constructional representation. And finally, we've got complex schematic constructions. For example, argument structure constructions like the resultative. Or here, we've got a transitive construction, which has got three slots, x, verb, y, z. So she gave him the books, he sent her the letter, um, Bill threw him the ball. In all of these, the subject causes the object to receive the second object. So um, Bill gave her a book means Bill causes her to receive a book. She threw him the ball. She causes him to receive the ball. Bill baked me a cake. Bill causes me to receive a cake. This is a completely schematic construction. All of the slots X, verb, Y, and Z can be freely filled by referential elements, by noun phrases. And at the same time, it's complex because we can identify for each of these slots an individual meaning. The X slot is the agent, the Y slot is the recipient, and the Z slot is the, encodes the theme of the thing that is being passed along or given. So here you see that constructions differ with respect to whether they're atomic or complex whether they just have one element on their full meaning level, or whether they have got more elements um, that are linked across the two domains, form and meaning. And substantive means the form element is completely filled, so no slots. Schematic means you're going to have at least one slot that you can fill freely. Summing up. Constructions are form meaning pairings. Because of pattern detection and generalization, we can create slots, and that gives us schematic constructions. Once we include schematic constructions in our analysis, we've got the lexicon syntax continuum. Everything that we talk about in syntax, from simple nouns and verbs, i.e. word classes, up to phrasal and clausal patterns are constructions. So we no longer keep lexicon and syntax distinct, and that's why we no longer talk about a lexicon, but about a constructicon, because the constructicon contains all of the constructions of a language ranging from atomic substantive, simple, completely filled constructions, to complex schematics one, schematic ones like the ditransitive or the resultative constructions, which consist entirely of slots. Okay, we will have more to say on the constructicon in the next couple of sessions, because as we will see, the constructicon is not a bag of constructions which are completely unrelated, but they form networks. But that's going to be the focus of the upcoming lectures. Thank you very much for your attention today. Looking forward to seeing you again soon.